have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Hark, the Herald Angels Sing. Hi, I'm Dr. Lowe, host of the Loretta Petit Show, heard here on Elation Radio. Hey, you missed the jingle bells, decking the halls, the great food, fun, and family. Remember that Jesus is still the reason for the season. Hey, friends, on behalf of my family to yours, we wish you love, joy, peace, a safe, and a very Merry Christmas.
Let me get my shit together here. Ooh. We're praising Lord, everybody. We're just so glad to have you with us tonight. And I'll tell you, it's 1030 at night. I can't even believe I'm up. Lord, God, I'm going to have to take some. Lord, help me stay up this late. But Lord, have mercy. Oh, I'm shy. I'm shy with y'all. I should go be introducing Pastor. Lord, have mercy. Uh, yeah, a uh, 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 Pastor is on the way. It's 1030 on Tuesday evening. Amen. And I tell you, amen, you have tuned in to the voice. Yeah, you tuned in to the voice. And some good is getting ready to happen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Apostle Vincent L. Smith. And you have tuned in to the voice another week. Amen. The Lord has brought us to come to you and share the word of God with you in a roundtable discussion, amen, with those who are on the air with us. And we want you to sit back and get ready to be fed from heaven, amen. Get out your fork and your knife because the Lord is getting ready to bless your life. Well, let's check and see who's with us tonight before we go any further. I know tonight, amen, by the way things are flowing, one person is with me, and she just had a birthday, y'all. Yeah, she's younger tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. That's our producer. Kimmy Kim, come on and say hi to the people. Hello, this is the day that the Lord has made. And what a great day it is. How are you doing today? Doing wonderful, fantabulous, and doing great on tonight. Amen. So glad to hear your voice. Was the birthday beautiful? Well, I was in Mississippi for a funeral, so I didn't get a chance to enjoy it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew I so. should. Have, I knew I should have flew out. You would have had a nice birthday. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so All cool. right. Well, congratulations anyway. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, let's go to that place called the Upper Marlboro Merlin. Amen. Is that Bishop Elect Ernest E. Rich, Richard with us tonight? All right, I guess he's otherwise engaged or on the road. Amen. He'll be with us after a while, I guess. Amen. Let us go down to the Peach State. Amen. <laughs> that Augusta, Georgia. We thank God for one man holding the trees up straight down there. And so is Apostle Urban A. Whitlow. All the line Holy greetings from the First Episcopal Baptist Church of the Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ, our Latter-day Saints, Love of God, Catholic Movement of the Best People of the World. Amen. Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord bless you, sir. Happy to be here tonight with you. All right, all right. Amen. I don't know if she's on, but let's go. The College Park area of the Peach State, and let's see if the Apostle Felicia Flight is there tonight. Hey, man, are you there? God in the state. 
Thank you, Dan. You can talk your face. God is great. Great, 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 great. Oh, hey, y'all. Right. It's Paula Lane. Hey. Glad to have you tonight. All right. Uh, I called another brother. I don't know if he's here now, but is the pastor Roger Wilkins from New Haven, Connecticut. Is he on the line tonight? All right. I don't hear nothing from him. He must not be with him. Is there anybody online, amen, that I do not know is there? You may recognize yourself at this time. All right. They say silence, give consent. And so it is us tonight, amen, two men, two women, so it ought to be a good podcast tonight. Amen. So we can have a little something from both sides tonight. And we thank God. All right. Uh, Apostle C, please lead us to prayer. Apostle Whitlow, get that scripture ready for us tonight. Lord, I'm so sorry. Gracious Father in heaven, we truly thank you now, God, for all things. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for another day, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for just allowing us to grace you with our presence, oh God. But Father, most of all, most importantly, I ask that you will forgive us, oh God, of every sin that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly right now, oh God. Wash us, oh God, from all unrighteousness, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Father, let tonight's podcast be unusual, oh God. Let it be unusually different, oh God. Let us come together to reason, oh God. We can disagree to agree, but let us reason together in unity. Father, I'm asking that you would have your way like never before. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. And I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Amen. Apostle Whitlow, please give us our scriptures for tonight. Yes, sir. First scripture tonight will come out of Zechariah, the 13th chapter, reading verse number 6. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in thy house, of my friends. Also, we shall read in your hearing Psalm, the 55th division. They're not chapters, they're divisions. And so in Psalm 55, beginning with 12, going down through 15, it says these words, for it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, man of mine equal, my guide, mine acquaintance, who took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them. Let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwelling. And among them. I read in your hearing Psalm 55, 12 through 15. The word of God for the people of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks be to God for the word of God. We want to talk tonight from the subject snakes, backbiters, and we want to talk. Amen. I'm missing one. Tell me what, though. Hallelujah. Snakes, I got to say, backstabbers and backbiters. Amen. Mm-hmm. We want to talk about the snakes, backstabbers and backbiters. Lord, 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 what a subject tonight. Amen. And people of God, listen in carefully. You can hear some good information about the enemy tonight. I, I I want to start off here 
hearing the subject in nice nights, backstabbers, and backbiters, we will not try to do all of this tonight because I must go on for the rest of the month. So what I'm going to do is take this in intervals. I'm going to take it word for word and lay it out and really give it to you so that you can understand and see your enemy afar off. And even if they're up close already, I want you to be able to distinguish your enemy right while you walk with God. All right. Now, there's snakes, backstabbers, and backbiters. Three words, three words that pack a lot of meaning. This is going to be very strong tonight. I'm not trying to warn you. I'm just telling you. It's going to be very strong tonight. So if you don't think you can take that strong this time of night, I'm going to tell you, stay on the phone. Oh, you thought I was going to say get off, didn't you? Amen. Stay on the phone and hear something that's going to help your spirit man. Amen. Uh, on purpose, I asked Apostle Whitlow, not to look up what a snake was. And all of you smart people that think you already know what a snake is, just wait till I come back. Amen. But Apostle Whitlow, if you would give us the definition of a backstabber and a backbiter at this time, and then I will come back and begin our first discussion tonight by giving you the definition of a snake. A backstabber is someone who attacks another deceitfully behind his or her back. Again, someone who attacks another. Someone who attacks another deceitfully behind his or her back back. That's a backstabber. And backbiter is um, looking at it. Amen. If this thing would just go a little bit faster tonight in Jesus' name. Okay, come on. Let's do it. Come on. You can. You can do it. Okay, don't want to come up just one second. We want to try it again. Knowledge you always seem to act that when you want it to work better. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) But that matter is uh, to say mean or spiteful things about a person such as someone who is not present. Again, to say something mean or spiteful thing about a person, such as someone who is not present. Okay, so... There's there's more? That's that's it. It's just, they keep, it was just real simple. I mean, I can look at it if you would like. Definitions, all our listeners, Keep those two definitions in the back of your mind. But right now, we're going to get to it, and I want you to remember what the man of God just read from the dictionary. We did not get that. That was not a biblical definition. Don't go running trying to get your Bible dictionary and all of that, that was a plain everyday definition so that you can grab hold and understand where we are going. But now let me go back to this first word. A snake, according to Webster's Dictionary, according to some other 
other dictionaries by definition which states is it meant two or three times. But by the first definition, most readily known as a reptile that is of warm blood that hunts ground or reachable from the ground. Let's flip that for a minute. What is a snake? A snake is one that hangs around with those that they make like, they love, care about, want to pray with, and all those kind of things, only to be the striker of the group, the one that is poisoned in the midst of God's glory in the midst of God's room. They are the venom. They are the one that you must watch out for. And here I will now begin my talk and then we're going to let everybody come in. A snake. We know it first announced and arrived in the Garden of Eden. Now notice God's definition about a snake. He is more subtle than any other beast of the field, which means he slides too. He's cunning. He knows how to maneuver. So it says he was fellow than any other beast of the field. I want you to know tonight that when you are dealing with a snake in your life, you are dealing with someone that is so cunning that is so slippery, that is so slimy, until you will think they're your best buddy, but they're really looking to see when's the best time to strike. What's the best place to hit you at? Is it an old relationship? Is it your walk with God? Is it the way you study is it those that you hang with? You know, is it something they know that somebody else does not know? Uh, they're waiting to see when to strike, how to strike, and how much damage can they do when they strike. Is a snake. And I want to say tonight that you must be careful in your walk with God, because whether you started today or if you've been in it for 10 years, 30 years, 50 years, you have encountered a snake. Now, here's what is interesting. There are several types of snakes. Don't you get caught up and think, that there is only one kind of snake to deal with because a lot of people, uh, women and men, bug out when they see a garden snake. But a garden snake is probably the only friendly snake you can find. But don't fool yourself. We don't become friends with snakes. Uh-oh. If we know better, we do better. You do not become friends with a snake. But some way, somehow, there are those of us on the line tonight on social media, on TikTok, hit the clock, put your socks, all that stuff that we have, 
man connected to our line, I want you to know that we have been somewhat blinded at times because we wind up with snakes in our circumference. We wind up with snakes in our uh, area, in our region, in our lives, and don't even know we're about to be bit. I tell the age-old story all the time. It was the cold of winter. The man was walking down the street and saw a snake shivering in the coat. He said, poor snake. He said he put the snake in his pocket and began to walk towards home. But while he was walking towards home, began to warm up and get better. And before he could get home, the snake had bit him in the chest. He got home, doctor on himself, looked at the snake and said, I picked you up out the cold. You were shivering. Looked like you were dying. But before I could get home, you bit me in my chest. Why did you do that, snake? I was trying to save you. And the snake looked at him and said, didn't you know? I was a snake when you picked me up. I want you to understand people will hang with you, talk with you, laugh with you, sad to say, but even pray with you, study with you, dance with you in church, and all that, and ain't nothing but a snake waiting to warm up and bite you. Where it can. All right, let's talk tonight. Let's talk. What is this thing about a snake in the midst of God's people? Somebody talk to me. Oh, don't let well, I'd like to, be, like to begin by saying that uh, snakes, they love feeding and feasting on junk. And so, therefore, when they can find junk, they'll have a good meal because that's what they were promised. You'll notice that snakes will eat guinea pigs. They have no problem with that. But if you get in their way, they don't mind eating you, making you their food. Now, if you're too big for the snake, the snake will starve itself to get itself ready for you. That's why they have that thing called an anaconda. So snakes, they look, they're around because they're looking for something to eat. They're looking for something to eat. I'm going to hold off right there. All right. Now, since you said it, I guess I'm going to have to ask the question to everybody online. How many types of snakes can you name? We're not going to be able to deal with every type of snake tonight. But how many snakes can you name? Also, Pete, how many can you name? Um, you have a python. You have the boa constrictor. You have the rattlesnake. You have the black snake. You have a moccasin snake. You have a rat snake. You have an oak snake. You have a tree snake. A grass snake. And you have the cobra. Out of, out of ten of those, the cobra is the deadliest. Then comes the python. Because as Apostle Whitlow has stated, most snakes starve themselves so that they can eat something big. A python literally smothers you. It crushes you. Their jaws are so wide they have no bones in their jaws that they can make their bones, that their jaws stretch open to consume everything that they want. So I want to deal tonight with that python snake. All right. Let me get a chance to give 
to give Kimmy Kim in, and, and then we're going to come back and let you deal with that python. Hallelujah. All right, Kimmy Kim, how many types of snakes can you name? Let's see. We have so many snakes, the garden snake, the fur, um, the black snake, the – what else? Um, hmm. I just know there's a lot of snakes out there. Um, another snake I can name is called the um, – there's one snake that they say that's very deadly out there that they can cause a lie. And uh, I'm, I'm just amazed that uh, we're on this subject because uh, let me type. Um, and also, I really believe, like, sometimes those garden snakes can be interesting. We have the viper. We have cobra. We have, you know, ooh. I mean, so many have the cobra. is really deadly, too. Um, so those would be my snakes, but I like this subject because you also find snakes in your garden when you're trying to grow things. So, yeah. And so those would be the type of snakes that I can name. And we also do have um, Elder Bishop, uh, First uh, Commander-in-Chief. Uh, yeah, we have... Um, Elder Herb, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be how you uh, wore um, Apostle Urban Whitlow. You have so many names from God, Church of God in Christ. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Elder Bishop, First Commander in Chief. Wow. It was sad. Wow. It, it was sad that the drug is a, a dead man. Uh, snake. I, I want to say not against them, but to help us or to help us in our conversation, there are two snakes that they claim is deadlier than a cobra. And, and I don't want to try to find out, and I ain't getting close to that one either. But they said the winding snake mm-hmm. and the hopping snake are more deadly than even the cobra. Uh The wine they take well uh, lives in the sand. And what it does, it stands tail. And it does not crawl to strike, but it will jump up out the sand and do a winding move and then leap forward to take a bite at its prey, and most times it gets what it's trying to attack. And then you also have the jumping snake, uh, which basically almost works like a winding snake, but he can jump so high at at his prey until if if his prey started running when he jumped. He's right where they're running to while they're trying to get away. And so, but we're going to go back. Uh, Bishop Elect, you're here. Quickly, how many snakes can you say? And then I want a thousand feet to get into this python. Um, yeah. Wow. A lot of them were named. I'm not going to add more to it. Uh, nobody mentioned the anaconda, which is the largest of all snakes, uh, can actually crush and swallow a human. Uh, and then there is the, I think it's called the hog snake. Uh, I'm hoping I have that right. I'm not sure. Uh, there's what's it called, the puff adder, which is found in Asia and in those areas. Oh, God, let me think for a minute. I'm trying to think of this, this, golly, uh, the black mamba, which is among the deadliest of all snakes that we probably know in, in this, and that snake is very slick, very slick. Now, I don't know, I think somebody mentioned the copperhead already. Uh, and if mm-hmm. they didn't, the water mo- there's the water moccasin. 
Uh, mm-hmm. There's uh, something called the lance head, and primarily that one, it's deadly. It can kill you, but it would take a few strikes for it to actually take you out. And I'm trying to think if there's mm-hmm. another one that I want to get my hands on. I cannot think of uh, the name of this other one, and I know what it is. I just uh, – uh, this one's found in – in the in the areas around the jungles of Korea, uh, uh-huh. what's it called? Uh, it, all right, I think it's it's either a taipan or a taipan or something like that. Uh, and we would it, it's real it, it's it really looks uh-huh. like an oversized worm, and okay. it doesn't look that dangerous. But you know it, uh-huh. it's it, it can do damage. I promise you. Uh, and then, of course, there is your typical brown snake, garden snake, what we got over here, them little green things you see running around that your wife or your your girlfriend would probably basically kill you trying to get away from. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are all I can name at the moment, uh, you know. And when I mentioned the mamba, mamba, I think black mamba, there's a black mamba. I said that already, but there's also a green mamba. That one's found in Africa. Okay. Uh, you know, so if we think we're going to go roaming around, that's why I don't understand how Tarzan could run through the jungle and not get bit up at least once or twice. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go a little deeper. Let's hear about this tiger. <laughs> okay, so in my, t- in my studying with um, a couple of snakes, the reason why I chose a python because a lot of people between a python and a boa constrictor have those two snakes for pets. You don't hear about any other snake for a pet except for a python and a boa constrictor. The reason why I said I want to focus on the python is because there is something called a python spirit mm-hmm. where that snake comes to suffocate you. Mm-hmm. Well, that snake comes to, to, to take the breath out of you. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you mean by that? A python is known, again, from it, it, it has this muscle in it that can contract and go back in. So the, the more it stretches and the more it breathes out, it crushes your bones. Now, I heard somebody say, I'm not sure who it was, if it was either Bishop-elect or Apostle Whitlow, name a snake that can swallow a human being. A python can swallow a human being whole. Some snakes have to break it down. But a python Uh can stretch its mouth so big, Mm -hmm. I think somebody said the anaconda, I believe, that it can actually swallow a a human being. Now, an anaconda... A an anaconda, a python, and a boa constrictor, all three of those snakes have the same thing in common. All three of them can swallow a human being. Uh-huh. Majority of them don't feed off of humans. They feed off of large mammals. Uh-huh. Which leads me again back to the python spirit. Because it can and will attach itself to you, starve itself so that it can feast only off of what you have. So even in ministry, we have to be careful about this python snake because it will suffocate you, and it's very deadly. It will try to kill you. It will take everything in you out and live off of that. I'm done. Okay. Now, let's, since she brought that out, Let's do an expose. Now, here we go. What are some of the ways that the Python spirit comes to choke people out, comes to crush them, amen, to death? What are some of the ways spiritually that the Python spirit works amongst the people of God? Uh, I'd like to commit that the Python spirit is often can be identified as a needy spirit, someone who needs someone to be around them all the time. Uh, And and so what happens is they don't know, but they are quietly being uh, suffocated, not allowed to function. And even when they're looking for opportunities, 
they are limited because that needy spirit is, is taking away from their ability to be free. And I'm going to hold right there. All right. Well, you, right make, you make mention of the, the snake with a needy spirit. That same python spirit is a greedy spirit. They want to usurp your position, your authority, and if possible, which really it's not, your anointing. And so they're going to do all they can to make sure that they put you in a position where you cannot give an answer for whatever it is that you're being uh, investigated on. And then it's funny how they make mention of the fact, and I know we're not we're, we're not going to the Bible as of yet, but Haman had that kind of spirit toward Mordecai. If it weren't for God's use of Esther, Haman probably could have suffocated and taken a position that did not belong to him. Oh, I'm, no. sorry, I'm gonna stop right there. <laughs> let, let's, let's look at one more thing. The Python, I've I watched it for years, the Python spirit comes into a ministry after leadership. And I'm not just talking mm-hmm. about the time. It comes to slow down the progress of the church. If it can slow down the, the prayer warriors and get them lazy uh, from coming to prayer, if it can if it can choke out Bible study attendees or, or whatever it is, you know, it comes to disturb uh, the, the 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 order of the church. It comes in to choke out those who are hungry or seem to be hungry, and that python comes in to hold back, to slow down, to choke. Out and where you had, and I ain't going no great big number, but where you had 25 in Bible study, kill a coming attack, and the next thing you know, you ain't got but five people coming. And you're like, where's mm-hmm. everybody at? And then you start calling around, you know, hey, we miss you at the back. Well, you know, uh, you know, I, I was just so tired. And then you call somebody else. Well, you know, this, that, and the other. And the next thing you know, somebody else. And really what that Python spirit has done has come in and choked the breath out of those who were excited about God and slowed them down. He ain't killed them yet, but he slowed them down from attending. And being a part of what could bless their lives. And God knows I've seen it over and over again. It comes in to choke out, to slow down, to make you think that the church is dead. And all you need to do is get rid, cut up, dab, whatever you have to do. Get rid of that spirit. And let the people get a breath of fresh air, and God knows if they won't return and the church grow like never before. I'm telling you. But what the enemy does, he'll use certain people to get that spirit into the ministry. And it's sad to say, but y'all said it many a time. Tonight, the Anaconda, the Bull Constrictor, all got big mouths. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. All right, somebody else, come on. Mm-hmm. I know y'all can't be finished with this bowl. Wait, you said what now? Repeat what you just said. Repeat what you just said. I
they got they got big and jobs I mean, because they try they they trying they're but, trying to to eat up what you are, but you can't fit in that big mouth. If that makes sense. I hear you. I hear you. But let's also okay, look at an let's look at the body of Christ. That boa spirit gets in people's mouth and start trying to choke them out. Start trying to swallow them whole by the words of their mouth. Nine times out of ten, when you start talking about the anaconda spirit, the boa constrictor spirit, or if you talk about the python spirit, most times it was somebody that got close enough to wrap around you and put their mouth so wide until they started smothering you and you didn't even realize it until your own bones couldn't breathe. I had to break mm-hmm. free myself. I'll talk about me. I had to break free myself a few years ago right here in this ministry before I became pastor. And it's definitely after I became pastor, I had to break free from some people. Because okay. I realized they were out to smother me. And don't fool yourself. They can even smother you by trying to be a friend that gets too common. Okay. If you want your ministry to die, get a group of folk that get too common with you. That Python spirit will take you right out because they're only getting close not to be prayer warriors, not to push you further, but everything they can find out against you, they'll use it for a squeeze. Well, Apostle, you're talking about this, and we can better understand what type of spirit caused those uh, uh, um trying to think which one it was that tried to do damage to David that caused David to write uh, Psalms 55 when he said it was not the enemy that approached me. For then I would have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. For then I could have hid myself from him. Uh, I believe it was one of his sons uh, that he was talking about uh, in that particular. But you could see clearly where that python spirit, even in the Old Testament, had a point in place where he reared his ugly head and tried to smother or suffocate the ministry of a God-given king. So if they're going to do that to somebody like David, who are we? I'm just asking the question, who are we? If they did it to Jesus, who were we? Is this you I'm just saying. And since you brought him up, the character David, what worse way can the enemy mess up your anointing than to come through your family? My God. It was his son that raped the daughter and caused a big mess in that kingdom, but all the while, he did what he did, trying to squeeze David out the picture. Mm-hmm. Amen. So I think tonight we need. We, I'm glad you started with that uh, philosophy. I think we need to take in all pastors that are online, all saints that are online, who may be some type of leader in your church. I think you need to take. Great notice of what we're saying right now because the enemy is coming in to wipe out leadership and to smother the work of the ministry. He want to squeeze it and he want to put his mouth on it so that you can't breathe, you can't move. There's nothing else you can do.
I'm telling you tonight, we've come up with, it's really going to bless somebody if they listen. And the first thing we have dealt with tonight is this python that comes to slow down, smother, squeeze to death, and smother the flow of ministry. Now, what can it do in your personal life, you know? Who, who do, what kind of people do you have to watch out for to know that you're being squished and trying to be smothered in your personal walk? Mm. Who do we have to look out for? What are the signs? Somebody tell me. Well, well a double talk a double yeah. talker is one. You know, they talk to you and say one thing to you that sounds positive as if they're on your side. But the minute you turn your back, they go to their counterparts, those who are supposed to be working with you, and they start spewing negativity about you. That's one of the first signs you've got to pay attention to. I'm always like this. If somebody comes to me and they talk about somebody else and I mean every now and then you'll say something and you'll say things in jest and I understand that but you come to me and you are land blasting and I mean just derogate in a derogatory fashion laying somebody down uh you know throwing them in front of the bus as far as I'm concerned if you did it to them 90 percent chance you'll probably try to do it to me so now with the saying that I have in life God I trust the rest of you Negroes and Negroettes and anything that matches that name, I watch. Pause the whip, Lord, give us another piece. Uh, the one who's always asking you for money. That's the one you need to watch out for. It's time you turn around. Hey, with me. Hey, let- you get $20 with you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm really going through something, and I need some help. I mean, uh-huh. every time you turn around, you know, uh, the baby needs some pampers. My wife needs some pads. Uh, mm. I need, I need some food. Okay. My car needs gas. I'm, I'm in between paychecks, and so I just need a little. Come on, you know, I got you. I got you. They don't ever give it back to you, but they make this story that. sound so horrifying and uh, so pitiful that it's almost as, as if to play on your conscience and make you feel guilty as if you're responsible for their uh, shortcomings and their errors and whatnot. So you, you're trying to tell That's me there's a financial, there's a financial problem too? Don't know if it is. Sure enough. Mm-hmm. There's a sexual one, too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I was... Sure enough. Sure enough. Come on, you Take there. Down the... Go on with it. Come on, you there. Go I ahead mean, with it. I'm, I'm a hey. That, that, that sexual so one what is now, the what one that, that they all, that's all they think about. Uh, you, know, hook, you know, I need I need it. I need it. I remember, I remember a, a, a story, and I'm gonna make this really, really brief. Remember this story of uh, this couple. They got married, and the man wanted his wife every single night, every single night. So she got to the point where she said, "I can't do this every single night." She said, "But I tell you what, I'll do. I'll give you three nights a week. You choose the three nights. And we'll stick to it." Came okay, Monday night. He tapped on the shoulder. She gave it to him. All right, came Tuesday night. He tapped on, on the shoulder. She gave it to him. Come Wednesday night, he tapped up, she tapped her, him on the shoulder, and that was it. All right, come Thursday night, he tapped on the shoulder, and she said, well, you're out uh, of, of what we promised for this week. He said, well, let me borrow from next week. That's that Python trying to suffocate that because he just couldn't Hold himself together. I'm done. Mm. 
Stop laughing. I'm trying to hold it back. <laughs> trying to hold it back. Lord, y'all know people die. <laughs> they never die before. Oh, good Lord. Uh-oh. Here we go. Lord, Jesus. <laughs> that was too cute. That was too cute. That I like that story. Well, let me buy it next week. Yeah, but you know, a part of spirit in in the, in in the personal life, it's just that they see opportunity. So you know, because you have a, a kind heart, a loving heart, a loving spirit, and you'll give the shirt off your back, they will suck you dry, literally. Mm-hmm. And when it's time to be poured back into, you have no one else to pour into you because you've given so much freely that, hey, okay, well, I, as long as she's giving it, you know, I'm going to take it. That's not always the case. When, when when does it become enough for you to stop? But a python doesn't stop until it, 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 its prey is dead, like motionless. Well, you said it earlier. He starves himself. And upon the completion of his starvation process, now he's hungry. He needs a victim. Guess who just happens to be tiptoeing through the tulips at the time when it's feeding time? You ever watch, uh, especially in a science class, how they will have, I don't know why they always have white mice, but, you know, I'm going to leave that there. I ain't going to make no racial slurs because we ain't trying to offend anybody. But they always use white mice to feed these snakes. And the mouse gets put in there, and the mouse kind of senses he's getting ready to put in danger. The mouse is trying to climb back up your fingers, and you drop him down in there. The snake doesn't move right away. He waits for the mouse to get near his mouth. And it's at that point that he strikes and makes his move. Never does he ever chase the mouse anywhere. He just lays there like he's dead, lifeless. As soon as that mouse crosses his path, the front of his mouth, and he has a sensor on the front of his mouth, the snake does, uh, where he knows that mouse is in the right position, boom, just hits him. Next thing you know, all you're staring at is the tail of the mouse. might wiggle twice, and after that, it's done. It's that, 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 what do you call that, that his, in, the, in his jaws that gives him the ability to crush. Now, you made some mention of something, uh, uh, Apostle Felicia. Yeah, Python does crush. Sometimes it's with his body, but most times it's with his mouth. Who's trying to crush us verbally, that is to say? Who's trying to crush you? Question. And not, and not you want me to answer that question on here? Because I tell you. No, I'm, I'm putting it in general, out there general. Oh, okay. Because, no. but, but you also said something while you were talking about the beat. You said they're waiting on opportunity. Mm-hmm. There are people... Looking at you, I don't let me change that. They're looking through you. Mm-hmm. They want to kill you so they can get to the next person who they really think getting close to you is going to get you close to them. And when they get close to them, they're going to use them to get close to another one. But every person they get close to, there's going to be a death. Mm-hmm. There, there's going to be a squeezing and a suffocating that's going to go on. Amen. And the sad part about it, when they get to the first person, they're going to use your name to say, I was told to meet you. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to suffocate that one if they can. And then they're going to go tell the next person, as so that you one told me, I need to connect with you. Mm. So when you use that word opportunity, it's not just waiting for the kill. 
there are people waiting to connect, and they think every person they connect with is going to take them to another level, another plateau. It's going to make their name great. But if you are a python, nobody's going to make you great because you're going to kill everybody. So who's making you great? Who, okay, who's bringing you to that, to that black dog if you're killing everybody? Well, they call themselves getting all the peons out of the way. They're looking for the PO they're looking for the POVers. And don't even realize that they themselves are just a peon trying to be a peover. I hope that makes sense to somebody. Let, let me let me let me read something to you if you don't mind, Apostle, concerning the spirit of Python. Go ahead. Um it, it I'm reading and it says Python always hangs around the following, worship, intercession, money, government. That is the true mm. apostolic authority. There are four yep. faces um, of, the, of the Python, and that is Jezebel, Leviathan, uh-huh. and of Python itself which manifests in compromise. It is anti-apostolic and hate prayer, especially night and day prayer. I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, that was good. That was good. And, and, and so we see that the Python has a full characteristic. It's not after just one thing. Read those four things again. Worship and what? Uh, Image uh, intercession. Uh, intercession. Mm-hmm. Government. Now, no, notice that. Yeah. All the, all the high things. Of the <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. No higher of the city of God than the worship of God. And the Python is after the worship. Prayer breaks up things in the house and even out the house when you talk about intercession. But the Python wants that. Mm-hmm. And as I stated earlier, what that he does not want the presence of God to have a way to operate. So he comes and squeezes out the ministries that can make the power available. And that's why I, mm. I, 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 I cringe when I go to churches that claim, well, you know, uh, we 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 the we the Baptist church. We don't do all that shouting and stuff, uh, you know. Or you go to another church. We don't do this. We don't do that because we this kind of church. Well, none of that matters to God. The devil has come in that place and has begun to squeeze, and nobody understands what's going on because you're hiding behind a denomination. When really, mm-hmm. the, when really the spirit of Python has come in and squeezed out the power of God. Oh, I'm getting happy. I better let y'all talk. Hallelujah. You know, one, one, one of the things I did want to say is that people need to know. I want to say this for all our listeners. Most times, when you are having dreams, I just heard somebody ask about, well, what about my dreams? Most times when you are having dreams and there are snakes involved, it's 
showing you demonic activity. You best believe that. I can share something with you on that. And this is before I came into I, this is before I came into ministry. The church you are very familiar with, Apostle Smith, it's right around the corner next to the Catholic Church, where your church is. And during that time, I was the uh, YPCL president. Uh, you know, I was over the youth department. I wasn't in. I wasn't a minister. I was a lay minister at the time. And uh, I had this dream uh, several nights before I left for North Carolina. This is during the time when I went to get my license as a tractor trailer driver. So we're going back a number of years. And in this dream, I was walking, and. I believe it was an angel that I was walking alongside, and it was holding my hand. The angel was holding my hand, but on the ground was every kind of snake you could possibly think about, black snakes, cobras, copperheads, everything. I mean, I saw these snakes, and I saw them crawling just as clear as I'm looking out around my uh, family room right now, and at the same time, I kept my eye on this angel. It was when I took my eyes off this angel and stopped for that split second. These snakes struck at me in my dream, and literally in my dream, you could feel them striking. God was letting me know right then and there that there were people that were looking to take me out and take me down. And sure enough, before I left that church, The devil revealed himself through a couple of individuals that because of the way God was raising me up, it made them jealous. And they saw one of them, and I'm going to say this, he was the most subtle of all of them. He's a minister, a pastor down in Norwalk right now. I don't need to tell you who I'm talking about because, again, you know exactly who I'm talking about. All right? I'm going to leave it right there. When people ain't here to defend themselves, you shouldn't throw them under the bus. I'm just trying to let you know. I was my first encounter of what a snake like a python spirit can look like and what an individual that has that snakish mentality can be like towards you. Uh, kind of realistic. With Whitlow with, with and Sly, I don't know if y'all caught the missing pieces that he said at the end. When he took his eye off the angel, then a serpent Try to snap, try to snap at them. But the thing I want to encourage all our listeners: you got to keep your eye on God. You do, right? That's distraction. When, mm-hmm. when I was, when I was, this, this, this was just about, this is about a couple of years ago. I had this dream. I was walking up. Uh, 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 Richard know where I retreat is, y'all, y'all wouldn't know yeah. that. But I was walking from Winchester Avenue in this stream towards Newhall. And I could hear the snakes, but I couldn't see them. I looked mm-hmm. the I, I looked I looked around me, but I could not see them. And about the time I thought I could move on from where I was at. One fastened around my hand. Mm. And I had my hand so tight, I thought for sure it was going to break my hand. But the Lord told me, he said, rub it against the tree. And while I was rubbing it against the tree, he could not stand the friction and begin to unravel. I said, Lord, no, I know I'm going to have a snake bite in my hand. I got to hurry up and get where I'm going so I can give some medical attention. When that snake unraveled off my hand, there was no snake bite. And when I looked back around to see the snake, there was no snake either. Wow. I'm trying to get you people of God, if you are really in God. The snake can't harm you. It might try to bother you, but it can't harm you. Amen. And that's what the Lord showed me that night. That it, I mean, it jumped up 
serpent, and God said, now walk on. Not another snake that I heard was able to come out until I got, when I got where I was going, I, I never got bothered again. You see, mm-hmm. and, and what I'm trying to say to you, don't get scared by our conversation. You got power over service. And we're talking about demonic activity. Don't you go to the pet store and buy those snakes. Talk about I'm going home to see what kind of power I got. I'm going to tell you what kind of power you got. They'll be visiting you at the hospital. Or the the morgue one. One of them. But in the spirit realm, you have power. Now, now, I want to move to another one right now. For some reason, my, my, my spirit man keeps saying, talk about the rattlesnake. Mm-hmm. Talk about the rattlesnake. Because somebody, uh, uh, better speak, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, better speak, possibly, hey, that somebody, uh, possibly, with no, somebody is listening at too much noise, but it ain't good noise. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's a good one. Well, I mean, the, the scripture turns around and says there are many voices in the world. That's a good one right there. Because, see, the thing, the, you, the thing, the, go ahead. Let, let me say this. I'm going to say this. Go ahead. And I'm going to make it plain. And if you catch it, you catch it. If you don't, guess what? Um, Anybody who feels comfortable whispering in your ear about somebody else, mm-hmm. huh? My mother would always tell me, be careful of the dog that brings you the bone. That's exactly right. You got me? Be careful of the dog that brings you the bone because he's taking the bone back. Mm -hmm. And the bone that he's taking, it ain't the same bone that you gave. So we have to be mindful. And we ain't even tapped into um, the backbiting and and, and the back stuff. We ain't even tapped into that. But anybody who feels comfortable coming to you, and I'll use me for an example. Anybody who feels comfortable coming to you, talking about me, and you don't, and you don't stop it, or you you don't um you don't correct Defend it, it, you're just as guilty as that person. You're just as guilty as the person that brought it to you. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you're just as guilty. A, 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 my, I was taught, I was taught that birds of a feather flock together. So you can always tell who they are because they don't hang That's together. That's Nigelations one on one. Yep. <laughs> you, you got you got you got the, the rattler on one side, but you got the uh, the the split tongue on the other side. The so, adder. Because everybody knows everybody knows snakes. They can't see. They don't have no vision. Nope. So what it is. If they they have what is called sensors. Watch That's this. it. They use they use their sensors, not their senses, their sensors, right? And 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 they're always using their sensors to find what is sensual. Mm-hmm. They can't deal with what is sensitive, and with their sensors, they're looking for heat, but they're not looking for the fire. That's why there's a problem for the people of God who don't want to stay in the fire of God. It's a, it's a problem for them uh, because, therefore, the enemy can get to them, especially those who are lukewarm. They play like they're hot, but they really ain't. Them who are lukewarm and indifferent, it's easy for the snakes. It's easy for the serpents. It's easy for the rattlers. It's easy for the python to get to them. And please be advised that snakes are not slow. No, uh, they're not slow by a long. They no, are they're not. Swift. Exactly when to strike, and they are just praying that you're not paying attention. Because just as long as you're not paying attention, it makes them easy. It makes you an easy target. I'm gonna hold off right there. No, you didn't have to stop right, right there. Go ahead. Let, let me say something right here. Over what Apostle just uh, over what Whitlow just said. We know all of us here, we're preachers, we know the old story about the pilot that was flying the plane. 
and realized that there was a rattlesnake in the plane with him. That when he first found out that he calls in and says, Mayday, Mayday, there's a rattlesnake in the plane with me. That dispatch answers back and said, go up in your altitude. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm getting happy. I better cut it out. It said, it said go up a little higher. Mm-hmm. And he said, the rattlesnake is still moving. They said, well, take it up just a little bit higher. And the more he went up, the more the rattlesnake began to back up in a corner. And he began to notice that the rattlesnake was scared of height. Oh, my Lord. I'm telling you, people of God, that's why the python comes. That's why the rattlesnakes make noise. They don't want us to go up into certain atmospheres of God. Because they know in certain atmospheres they can't operate. They can't breathe. There's nothing there's nothing they can do to the people of God once we take it up to the right atmosphere. Amen. I guess I could ask the question tonight, who's ready to go to the right height to stop the activity? All right now. Because the devil's just too loose in the body and in the kingdom right now. He's just smithering and, and, and doing whatever he want to do. Somebody's got to be willing to go up another further. Mm-hmm. And put him in a corner and make him scared. And they said that the pilot stayed at that altitude until the rattlesnake was dead. Wow. If we Man. go up high, we can kill some stuff. Amen. God so that reminds me that that reminds me of the eagle. You know, the eagle can look down and see so much that 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 other birds can't see. So you That's talk right. about the, the the rattlesnake the rattlesnake being in the airplane and, and the altitude was so high that the rattlesnake died. But look at this, look at this before we go. Look, just picture this: an eagle sees its prey down on the ground. Uh huh. An eagle go flies down without the prey knowing that the eagle is there. The eagle snatches up the snake and takes it up higher. The higher it goes, the snake is like, no, eagle, please don't take me up higher. I'm not going to survive. The eagle goes a little bit higher. The snake says, no, Mr. Eagle, don't take me up. I'm not going to survive. The eagle reaches the highest altitude that it can possibly go. The snake dies. What the the eagle does is it drops the snake down. I've taken you up to where I am. Now i got to let you go. Mm -hmm. I said out to say this. Anytime you write you're going higher, your prey can't go. But sometimes it's it's good to take your prey with you while you're going higher so that they can see how high you can get and how you can drop them off just like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Something to think about. Something yeah. to think because, about. See, we're so, we're so, we're so me. I use, I, I got to use me. I'm so easy to throw the towel when, 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 my, when my enemies or my foes come around me and, and they do little stuff to me. But what I learned on today, December 7th of 2021, take your enemies up higher with you. They can't last long. They can't stand that. A lot of people can't stand the smell of smoke because when you've been through smoke, it was for you, not for them. 
when you're going higher as an eagle, it's for you, not for them. When they see you center stage and they have to sit in the balcony, it's about you, not about them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes your enemies got to watch you from afar. I call them secret admirers. You watching me from hey. afar. And see, I'm a trendsetter because what I do, you try to mimic. But come up. God is calling you to come up. Come on up a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. Let's see who folds when you get called up a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. I don't preach the whole sermon. It's time for the offering, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> She ain't got good sense. What? What job? We and got it's uh, you got. Uh, if you're asking what time it is, you got about eight minutes to the top of the hour. Well, well I'm not. I'm not gonna bring up another state tonight. <laughs> what I'll do is give a last statement from everybody. Lord, see, we got to talking about exposing the enemy tonight. In this realm, the outside the guy with Lord have mercy. But we'll be back next week with some more of this good word, this good discussion, and giving you what you need to know. So you don't be blinded by the enemy and fooled by his tactics. We're going to expose it, and we're going to let you know so that you, and run this race with patience. Father Whitmore, what you got to close with tonight? I'm going to say this. Watch your step. Watch your step. Because there might be a snake waiting to snap on you. Watch your step. Go with God, and he will, and he will go with you. All right. Bishop Elect, what you got to say to go with the people tonight? Dark places, crevices, and dark corners are not the place to hang out in. It's when you can't see, that's when you're going to see that where you are is not the right place to be. Snakes don't care who you are, what you are. If they're hungry, you belong to them in their eyes. Last words I'm going to say to you is hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because the minute you lose focus and let go, that's when you become dinner for some snake in the grass waiting to devour. That's all I'm going to say. All right, Sister Aubrey, hey, what you got to say? Sister Aubrey. <laughs> oh, that would be me. Um, So... <sighs> Uh-huh. Okay, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna, I'm going to say this, and y'all might rebuke me, but that's fine. I'm gonna say this. This is my motto: Don't come for me unless God sent you. Because when you come for me, I'm gonna give you an antidote that you won't be able to handle. CDC can't cure it, but prayer can. Mm-hmm. So please don't try me, and that's negalations one on one. But that all of that. We gotta understand the snakes that are that, that are that are around us. Snakes sometimes come to warn. Snakes sometimes come to bite. You gotta know the difference of what snake you're dealing with. Amen. Amen. Now lift your dirty hands. Lord, Lord help, me. help her. Now, now tonight, I got to close by hearing the voice of one who has been very quiet tonight. But I know she's online. We want to get a closing statement from Kimmy Kim. Absolutely. This is my subject. Um, one, thing, one thing I can say about exposing snakes, you can only lie so, many, you can only lie so much because, you know, when a snake lot, when a snake around, they make a lot of lies. So they tend to forget what they said before and before that. So, in the end, they do get exposed, and sometimes it could be someone in your in your uh, cut. So I'm still reminded that we all got Judas and a Peter in our in our uh, camp. So you just 
continue on focus on what you're doing because one thing I know about God, he will do the plucking. So Jesus, keep on tucking. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. I was trying to rhyme, okay? I was trying to rhyme. You just keep on tucking while he do does bad. the plucking. You didn't do bad. I'm trying to keep up with you guys, so. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> yeah. I'm flying out to St. Louis and see what be in that cup before we come home. <laughs> you know what? You ain't the only no. one. No. Yeah. It's holy water. And it's called I'm sure it Loving is. the Podcast. Yeah. It's called 80 Proof. Ain't that what it is? <laughs> yeah, so it. Oh, I got, I got, I got a pasta Felicia now, so y'all can't mess with me no more. <laughs> you know what? I like her. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, and that's pa- on pasta period. Uh huh. Well, we're gonna put it like this. Don't come for us. Don't come for us, cause we'll, we will invite you in. You'll get snaked. Keep on. Oh wow. Let, let, me, let me say my clothes in peace before we have to go up there. Mm-hmm. If you are experiencing a lot of slime areas in your life, you better believe there's a snake somewhere. You better watch yourself before you get bit. I said to you tonight, if you're catching hell, don't hold it. If you're going to hell, Please don't stop. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. God has more in store for you. Timmy Kim, make it roll, make it rock, make it play. Hallelujah. God bless everybody today. And my 